Hello. In this edition of Refining Your Pilot Skills, we'll be looking at some aspects of using the EFIS, Electronic Flight Instrument Systems. Now, whether you're experienced in glass cockpit operations or training in this way for the first time, it's useful to know what are the type of issues that we regularly see pilots come up against during training and checking. In this way, you can put strategies in place to avoid making the same errors and to improve your safety and efficiency at work. That's what we're trying to achieve in this short video. The first issue that we'll look at is simply the failure to notice priority colours on the primary flight display. The colours we should see all the time on our flight displays are cyan, magenta, green and white. The colours which should really catch our attention are red and amber. When these colours appear on the MFD, pilots are normally quick to identify what's happening. The attention getters from the crew alerting and warning systems clearly help with this. But when these colours appear on the PFD, we're not always quick to spot the messages and understand their significance. These messages are generally associated with missing or invalid data or with miscompares or disagreements between different sources of data. So they can have an important impact on our situational awareness. They can also reveal when other systems like TCAS, weather radar and TORS are not working in optimal modes. Again, having an adverse impact on our situational awareness. The second EFIS related problem which we often see is pilots forgetting which navigation source they have selected. Typically this will happen when workload is high and there is a need to make quick changes to the navigation source during a missed approach procedure for example. Prior to this approach the pilot will have switched from en route navigation FMS for example to the localizer as primary navigation source. For the missed approach procedure seen here, the pilot may choose to use VOR navigation to get to the holding fix. This of course means selecting a VOR which he has tuned to the correct frequency. Or he can use FMS as long as the missed approach procedure is selected in the flight plan. Either way, taking a couple of seconds to check the selection before committing to it will prevent a deviation from the desired flight path. The third area where we often see problems is in choice of display. On modern helicopters there's a huge array of different displays available to choose from with flight plan, TCAS, TORS, weather radar, plus moving maps, synthetic and enhanced vision and external cameras as other options. Pilots need to choose what to display both on their PFD and their MFD, but also in a multi-crew environment who will monitor which part of the picture. The best selection will depend on weather and visual environment, the air traffic environment, the nature of the task, surrounding terrain and so on. Just remember, it's not necessarily true that the more information available the better, because there's a danger of making the displays too cluttered to see the most important elements. One of the key aspects of making the picture in front of you easy to interpret is selecting an appropriate range. Try to avoid having a range so small that you only have a picture of a small bubble around the helicopter but also avoid range that is too large because otherwise you'll end up with a lot of symbols crammed in on top of each other and you won't be able to read any of them. Finally, don't overlook the value of having a simple bearing pointer selected on your display. It gives you an easy indication to fall back on if you lose your smarter displays through technical failure or finger trouble. So, 
three simple things to remember in order to avoid a lot of EFIS errors. Firstly, search out and identify any red and amber indications wherever they appear in front of you. Secondly, take a moment to verify your navigation source each time before you couple it to the flight director. And finally, take some time to organize your displays before your workload gets intense. I hope you found this video useful. If so, there are several more in this series available for you to use and share as you wish. Check out our website at www.focuscrewtraining.com. Bye for now.